Hey guys, this is Brian at Obedia, and I'm going to show you a new feature today in Personas' Studio One 2 digital audio workstation that I think a lot of folks are going to find very useful in their workflows, and that is the Transform Track option. Now, as we move along in our process of recording, mixing, mastering a piece of audio, we are, of course, going to instantiate and make use of a number of plugins because that's the beauty of digital audio is being able to make use of inserts and plugins. But of course, as we start to instantiate all of those fancy plugins, sometimes we can start to slow our computer down. So a good way to be able to free up a little bit of processing power in your computer as you move along is to transform your audio to rendered audio. So what this is going to do is it's going to actually take the audio as I hear it playing back with all of my effects, but it's going to create a version of this audio which will not be editable with respect to my effects, but will free up system resources. So in order to access this, all I've done is right-clicked on my track and I've selected the option Transform to Rendered Audio. Now when I do this, I'm going to get the Transform Audio Track dialog box. And here I can choose Preserve Real-Time State. Now if you want to be able to go back and edit this audio as real-time audio again, which means being able to edit your effects, you want to go ahead and tick the box next to Preserve Real-Time State. And then you'll see the box here for a tail. This is very useful if you have delays, reverbs, and various things like that on this track, which you want to be able to hear after when the audio has stopped playing. So if you know that at the very end of your audio you have a delay which you would like to continue on, think about how long you would like it to be, let's say 20 seconds, which is probably going to be more than enough. Enter that number and then hit OK. So after you hit OK, Studio One is going to do a little bit of thinking and what it's going to do right now is it's going to create a bounced version of the audio that uh, we have on this track and this audio is going to be representative of all the effects and various things going on on this track, uh, except it's going to be bounced down. So the beauty of this now is that this track will no longer be using up a large amount of processing. And you're going to notice that right here, I don't have any inserts active on this track now, and that's because these inserts have been bypassed and are no longer active on this track. Uh, because now this track is a bounced version of itself, so it won't be using up as much audio processing power now. So this is really useful, and uh, so if we want to go backwards, we can just cl right-click on the track and, and re-render this track back to audio. So now we're back to using regular audio track, and if we expand the channel strip, you'll notice now I have access to all of my uh, plugins yet again, and I can start editing them if I would like. Now, another really useful feature in uh, Studio One 2 is the ability to transform MIDI tracks to audio. So let's take a look at how we can do that. So I have here a MIDI track. Let me go ahead and solo this and play it back so you can hear it. So that's just a bass line that I've created in the Mojito synth. And what I would like to do is transform this to audio. Now, usually transforming uh, or bouncing a, a MIDI track in a digital audio workstation requires doing a few steps uh, in order to bounce that track to audio. But now with the transform audio option, I can very easily convert a piece of MIDI to audio and uh, be able to continue editing it once I'm done with my soft synths and uh, various things like that. So in order to do that, Again, all I'm going to need to do is right-click on the MIDI track that I'm working with, and I'm going to scroll down. I'm going to select the option Transform to Audio Track. So when I click on that, I'm going to get the Transform Audio Track dialog box again. There's a few more options in here. Uh, you're going to notice that there's a couple options. Uh, number one is Render Inserts, and you're probably going to want to go ahead and enable this because this will render out uh, various effects that you might have on that track. You'll also see Preserve Instrument Track State and Remove Instrument. You want to probably leave Preserve Instrument Track State enabled because this will allow you to go backwards and send this track back to a regular MIDI track if you would like to edit the MIDI later on. And then there's Remove Instrument. If you're done with the software instrument that's on this track, you can go ahead and uh, check that. 
that really depends on if uh, you're all finished up with that instrument in your session. And then we can set a tail. Again, this is good to set if you have reverbs, delays, things that you want to keep on that track. And then you can set the channel that uh, you would like to render out. In this case, I only have the Mojito active. So when you've done all of these different settings, uh, you're just going to go ahead and click on OK. And when we click OK again, Studio One is going to do a little bit of thinking, and it's going to render this MIDI track down to a regular audio track. So there you go. Now you can see that this track that was originally a MIDI track now is rendered to an audio track. Now the cool thing is I can also see the MIDI notes which were active uh, previously. So I still have an idea of what it is that I played, but now this is just an audio track. And again, there's not a software synth taking up any kind of, of uh, processing power here. Now I can also right click on this and I can do a number of other functions if I would like because now I can edit this as audio. So I could, for instance, edit this with the built-in Mel Melodyne uh, integration that's built into Studio One. I can uh, create fades and various things like that. And I can do all these different functions that are available to me when this track is audio that would not normally be available if this was a MIDI track. So this is a very useful feature for being able to save processing power and also be able to take your mix to the next level by editing your audio even further. Now, if I want to go back and continue to edit this as a MIDI track, I can right click, I can scroll down and select transform to instrument track. And then there you go. Now I've got my MIDI back and I can continue to edit the MIDI if I would like. And uh, this way I have a whole lot of flexibility available to me as I create my song in Studio One. So I think you guys can see just how useful this feature really is in Studio One 2. You know, as I say, as we work on our production, we can really start to bog our computers down with the large amount of plugins that we might instantiate in a session. And so this is a great way to free up some of that processing power. I hope you guys found this useful. As always, please stay in touch with me. My email is brian at obedia.com. Find me on Twitter at twitter.com forward slash obedia tutor and on Facebook at facebook.com forward slash obedia tutor. Please give me a call. Find out how you can work one on one with us. And we'll help you to tame your technology and get the most out of your digital audio hardware and software and help you tame your technology, which is what we do best here at Obedia. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I will see you next tutorial. Until next time, take care. Thank you.